Hey guys, welcome to Small Mouth Crush. Today we are going to do a little cranking. Cranking for smallies coming up. All right, so I love cranking for smallmouth, and specifically in this video, I'm going to touch on fishing for smallmouth in 10 feet of water or less. Uh, I will be making a video uh, later this year uh, when the pattern gets right on cranking for some deeper smallmouth, uh, you know, 15 plus feet of water. And uh, man, it's a great way to catch fish, cover a lot of water. Sometimes it's the only thing that works, and oftentimes it can get some pretty good bites. So let's kind of go through my setup for shallow water cranking. So I throw a handful of crankbaits. I have my, my big go-to crankbait box here, which is uh, loaded with all my favorite colors, all my favorite cranks, and the majority of them are the Rapala uh, DT6 and a DT10. So when I'm cranking in those zones, I'm either throwing a DT10 or a DT6. The DT6 is great if you're in, of course, six feet of water or less. I always like to be able to hit the cover a lot of times you're cranking around uh, rock, uh, maybe some, some grass as well. And so you want to be able to get down to the right depth and make sure that you're constantly banging cover with that. Uh, oftentimes that's going to trigger a bite. So if I'm fishing 8 feet, 9 feet, um, or even 10 feet, the DT-10 is going to come into play. The DT-10 obviously is a little bit bigger profile, but not too much bigger, but allows that bait to get down deeper. So don't be afraid to throw a little bit bigger bait. Um, you know, if you have to. So it, even if it's six, six and a half, and you're not getting this DT6 down uh, quite far enough, you, you want to throw that DT10 and see if you can grind the bottom with that. So a lot of my crankbaits are going to be the DT10 in a lot of different colors. My number one favorite shad color pattern is Helsinki. It's just kind of my go-to standard crankbait, and uh, the DT6 specifically and the DT10. But I also have them in, uh, you know, Crawfish colors, uh, dark reds, browns, and then of course fire tiger. And those are really the, the main colors that I throw, um, you know, as far as a DT6 is concerned. Oftentimes when I'm shallow water cranking for smallmouth, they'll be on a perch bite. And so I really like the live target uh, perch crankbaits. This one here is a little bit bigger. Uh, I find that I throw this one the most. This one gets down about six to eight feet of water, and it's a really good perch imitating bait. I catch a lot of fish on it, especially in the summer in some of the northern parts of the lake when they're really keyed in on that perch. And then, you know, I, I hate spending $20, $25 on a crankbait, but I found that the Japanese OSP Blitzes, and this is a really good crankbait for me for smallmouth fishing and largemouth too, uh, but I really like these deep runners. Um, they just have a really good action, real nice wobble. They're very finessey, okay? They, they don't make any sound. It's just a tight sneak up wobble type action. And I really like the, uh, the, the middle runner. And then they also have a tiny middle runner, which is a great bait in that four to six feet of water as well. So I'll throw those quite a bit. So I'm not throwing these if I'm going to get snagged up quite a bit because they are pricey. I have a, a special little box of some of the Japanese crankbaits that I throw. And so I'm, I'm, pretty, uh, I'm pretty conscious about where I throw this bait because I hate losing a $20, $25 crankbait. And they're very hard to find. Uh, in order to get some of these blitzes, uh, th there is some tackle stores that carry them. A lot of times they don't have the right color, the right sizes. So I buy a lot on eBay. And, of course, I also buy them direct from Japan, which kind of is a pain, especially if you're in need of them, because uh, it does take a while for shipping. But very good quality bait. Uh, if you're serious about cranking and you want to you know, put some really good fish in the boat and give the fish a little bit different look, I would highly suggest the Blitz crankbaits. There's a good one. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
Took a while, we got them. It's not bad. Okay, so when you're choosing a rod, you really want a rod with a really good tip. Anytime you're throwing a, a crankbait or anything with treble hooks, you want to be able to uh, make sure you have a rod that's going to help keep those fish pinned. And so this one here is a seven foot. Uh, this is a Dobbins uh, Champion Series or Give. Uh, I'm throwing probably 10 on this. I'll go up to 10 to 12 right around there. Right now it's got 10. And this one I throw all my smaller blitzes as well as a DT6 on. And then for the DT10s, uh, this is another Dobbins. This is a 765 glass rod. It's a great rod. It's got a little, little bit heavier action uh, designed for throwing, helping to throw some of the bigger, bigger baits. So a DT10 is a great fit with this rod. Uh, here I have 12 pound test line. And I use monofilament on all my cranking rods. Sometimes I'll use a uh, hybrid like Yozuri. And you can get away with fluorocarbon as well. It's just your preference. I just, I choose to use um, monofilament whenever I'm cranking. And one key is, of course, I always switch the hooks out to triple grips. I've, I've been fishing triple grips for years. This goes back to the days of uh, when I used to fish for walleyes quite a bit. We would troll with crankbaits. And the fish just, whenever we switched over, because trolling, there's a lot of drag, a lot of resistant. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And those fish always seem to be pinned and hooked really well with triple grips. I, I mean, this is 10 plus years ago now. And so when I started getting into bass fishing, I, ch I started using the triple grips on all my crankbaits as well. And I'm real satisfied with the hookup ratio with that. Now, some of the smaller crankbaits, uh, some of the blitzes, uh, their hooks are really sharp the factory hooks that come with them. Uh, I'll change them out, but the, like these tinies, even like a size four, I believe, uh, triple grip is a little bit too heavy for this bait. So oftentimes I will leave uh, these hooks on there, but they are really, really sharp, even though they're just standard round bends. Uh, they do work well. You know, as you can see in this, this one here, I kind of custom painted. That one does have uh, the triple grips on it. So it does work with those baits. And of course the uh, live target perches, I put the, uh, I believe this is a size four uh, triple grips on there. There he is. Now that one came off that rocky point right over there. Go, not a bad fish. Not bad at all. So here I get a snag, and this is what I was talking about, having a lure retriever is really important. Uh, obviously, if you're grinding the rocks, banging in the structure, or something's got two treble hooks on it, you're going to get caught up. Bill's going to get caught up under the rocks. So um, lure retriever really comes in handy here. I'll show you guys how I, how I use that here in a second. Basically, I just thread that through the line. And let it slide down the line. Work it a little bit. This one uh, popped off pretty easy. 
There's times you may have to work it four, five, six minutes, believe it or not, uh, before that comes off. You know, it's just how much time you want to put in it, how important that crankbait is to you. And hopefully, eventually, it'll pop out, come loose. Mine's pretty beat up. It's been on the bottom of the lakes quite a bit. But it certainly works. When I was shooting this video, there was so much wind that day. It didn't look like it because I was in a protected area, but 20, 30 mile an hour, camera's blown all over the place, almost lost it. Man, it was crazy. So here I hook up with a pretty decent fish. And really the area I was fishing in was about eight feet of water and there was uh, some current. I was up close to the rapids there. And it was a staging spot so the fish were in pre-spawn. And I guess because of the current, I mean this fish just fought like it was a six pounder. It was a decent fish, don't get me wrong, but it had me all over the boat. It took a while to get it in. Uh, there's a point, um, especially with these light rods, light line, even 10 pound tests on a DT6, I'll spool the fish. Like when, he, when he's close to the boat, I'll thumb that reel and allow line to go out that way as instead of relying on the drag system. Uh, and I had to do that when he was bulldogging me there. We eventually get him in. He hit that uh, Rapala DT6. And he looks pretty good with those triple grips, that's for sure. Not a bad fish. And again, it's really important when you're cranking around structure and rocks, you, you're going to want to check your line. The first three, four feet of line really gets beat up a lot, especially when you're grinding. So, you know, I'd rather take the time to retie than lose it on a, a good fish. What are you going to do? You going to flip them in? You got 10 pound test line, man. Come on. Really? Yeah, that's right. You go grab that fish. There you go. There you go, guys. A nice small mouth. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what your favorite crankbait is for, for catching smallies. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.